Here's the update on the front radiator support. I ended up getting rid of those bars that were underneath for the supporting the bumper to the headlights so it's nice and flat. I ended up cutting those off. I ended up making new brackets and switched that out to aluminum. Uh, these two lower black bars are going to get new brackets made and then switch those out to aluminum. Make it a little bit lighter. They'll get my front bumper support weight down by a lot. But the actual radiator support, I only replaced mine because mine was rusted from the inside out. I didn't do it because I was bored. I didn't do it for weight reduction. I did it because it was the easiest way to fix it. Mine was rusted from center to center. So this whole center piece was gone. It was paper thin. So I just kept on going. And I just came up with the shape in the garage. I mean, I had an idea of what I wanted and where I needed to be. So it just kind of loops around, shrinks down to be one inches. And then just kind of go from there, kind of winging it up. It ain't got to be perfect. You can't see it. But still kind of cleaning it up, getting everything welded where it needs to be. The... AC mounts. Uh, I still got to cap the ends on it, but they're on there. Uh, I ended up taking them, drilling another hole into it so that they bolt on instead of being kind of a slide in the factory. You see where they are, your factory bracket would actually be down here. So you see, this is a lot smaller than the factory one. And then the radiator mounts. Uh, just be two screws. The radiator actually sits right there in the center, so it doesn't need to be overly built. It's simple enough uh, as long as it stays where it needs to be. But it's got it tacked into there. Some of it was welded up. A little bit of progress. Then all that metal is taken out from where the headlights would kind of be. And then it's just a single post that comes up. Both sides are done. Holes are filled in on the top of the radiator support. I didn't get rid of this lip because it needs to be there. It gives this top piece a lot of strength. I didn't think it would, but once I actually cut all that metal out, yeah, this kind of got a little bit flimsy. So these one inch posts are welded to the, the, uh, the actual mount kind of there's a flat piece of metal underneath there not the frame rail the frame rail kind of comes and it's a boxed in section if you tore it apart you'd see it but it's welded to that and then my frame rail caps is welded around there and then it's welded to the stop piece and then to keep it from twisting it's the one is square tubing, I ended up cutting it in half, so I made my own angle iron. And then it's welded up and over and back down. So it's all welded in there. It keeps this from twisting, gives it all of its strength. I still got to cap some of it. I mean, it's somewhat done. It's getting there. If we're going to do a video, it's going to be kind of hard to see it when everything's black. But I said I want to get rid of that cooling bottle hole, so now I can. These panels, these aprons are on back order from late model and Mustangs Unlimited. So whenever those become available, I get them and put them in. I don't want to deal with filling in all the holes. So for getting rid of that, went to junkyard. The washer bottle is from a 99 Acura TL. The coolant bottle is from a 98, 99 Honda Accord. And then it has a 99 Acura TL bracket. But the washer one is the best one I could find since I wanted the washer bottle to be down inside the front bumper and away from being there. So that's where those are going to go. Uh, the washer bottle is a really nice one because you can swivel that neck. So if you wanted it to be there, you can have it there. Or you can swivel it all the way over here and have it up against the front of the radiator support. And then the top of it also swivels. So if you moved it over here, it's got a little bolt. So you can rotate the top of it and then bolt it onto there. Pretty cool bottle. 
I was in a junkyard for a while. I knew I seen something like this. I just didn't know what I seen it in. So I was there all day. That's what it looks like. And then your headlight panel kind of sits right there. So I end up, there's a tab that's on there. I cut the tab off, but it has a screw there. And then it has a screw there. So I'll probably end up making a, a little bracket front underneath this to support it. So when it's full of water, it's not relying on just those two screws. But I mean, it's getting there. You kind of get an idea of where I'm going with it. Uh, I had to make a little bracket. It's, it's welded on there, tack welded for now. Make sure it fits. And then for the cooling bottle, that bracket is the Acro bracket. So an Acro bracket fits a Honda cooling bottle. You could use the Acro cooling bottle. I didn't like it, I thought it was ugly. It had a weird shape to it. I like this one better. Personal preference. But they fit in there. So when the radiator is actually in, radiator kind of be like that so you're not really going to see it so when you're actually looking inside the engine compartment all you can see is just that little corner so kind of gets rid of all the stuff that was there and all the stuff that was there filled in all the holes frame rails are capped a lot of the, all the holes on the frame rails are all been filled in Still got a lot more metal work to do, a lot more grinding to do. Uh, then aluminum angle, angled aluminum is going to end up going right there to fill in the gap from the support to the radiator so that all the air doesn't come out. I looked online, I didn't like any of the ones that I've seen. The ones that I've seen covered up all the work that I did, so I don't really like how they came over. And then the Scott Rod one kind of stuck out. I was like, yeah, I just want a simple, just cover the air gap right there. So that's I ended up making one for that. But when I capped the frame rails, like I said, I cut that half inch lip off and then took a level and a straight edge and I made sure that these were flat. But I also stretched them to where they met the strut tower. So now it's welded to the strut tower instead of having that half inch gap. And I'll do the same thing here when I cut that lip off. I'm going to stretch it so it meets the firewall. I'll weld it to the firewall. And then I'll stretch it to the strut tower and weld it to the strut tower. That's good in there. I mean, it sounded really easy when I was first thinking about it. Then once I started doing it, I was like, yeah, it's a little bit harder. Ah, but it's getting there. That's it.